Hey you guys, um, Melissa here. Just wanted to check in with you guys. Um, I went to Stanford a few weeks ago and found out that the gastroparesis that I have had for four and a half years um, is actually not only in my small intestine, which is what I first thought or was told, um, but the tests have shown that it's in my entire digestive system. So um, there's a there's a pseudo obstructions and IBS and gastroparesis and it involves my um, small intestine, my colon, and my stomach. So a transplant, uh, my doctor has only done once of a full digestive system and she doesn't really want to do that to me and I really don't want that. I'll have a colostomy bag um, if I have that. So she just said that um, I'm, I'm improving, but slowly, she said, which is true, um, with the medications I'm on. Um, I'm still throwing up every day, but um, not as much, and I haven't had to go to the hospital since I have all of my um, IV therapy here. So um, that's been saving some money and some time and some stress, so... Uh, I still am out for two days and then up for one day and out for two days and up for one day. But she says that's normal with gastroparesis, uh, which sucks because I was hoping that maybe that would improve. Um, but she says that really the only thing that we can do is treat the um, symptoms, which is the nausea and the pain. And um, and just wait and see what happens. Um, it's been... Uh, it's been almost five years for me, and the the girl who did the who she did the transplant on it happened for seven years. So, I told my doctor that um, I told her that I'm really having a hard time f still fighting for my health, um, and you know I told her that I would fight as long as she really believed I had a chance that I was getting better, but that if she thought at any point that this was the end of the road, this was how I'm going to be in, I'm not going to get any better, that she would tell me so I didn't have to fight so much anymore because it's just really hard, you know, traveling to Stanford all the time and doing all these different tests and getting my hopes up and my family getting their hopes up and we just kind of want some closure but I'm, I don't want to get closure by not doing what I'm supposed to do to get better. So I told her that I would work as hard as I can to get better. I would, um, you know, put all my energy into it and do everything she tells me to do. But when the day comes, she needs to tell me if um, if this is just how it's going to be. She says, for now, I am, quote, out of danger if I do the uh, infusions and medications regularly. So I just have to make sure that I do that. Um, and I've been doing my own dressing changes, which have been better uh, since the... Um, before I had the catheter, I had a pick line that got infected, and I was in the hospital, and it was because of a nurse that came here. So when I was in the hospital, I got taught how to change my own dressing, and I've been doing that, and I've had it for over a year now and haven't had an infection, knock on wood, um, which is good, because if I do get an infection, it could invo involve the heart valves and stuff. So I've been really careful about my procedure, which is on some other tapes. Um, other thing I want to talk to you guys about is I went through the SKIP program, which is a program at Stanford, and it is um, about, it's a pain management um, inpatient program, and what they did is I was on the fentanyl patch, I was on morphine, Percocet, Selma, um, a lot of just, med a lot of medications that I was still in pain and they were slowing my, my motility in my stomach, so... I went inpatient on this program for six days, and they took me off all my medications and gave me a blind drug cocktail. Um, by the time I was done with the program, they had me um, only on a very small amount of morphine and um, some um, liquid dilated to take home, which was still, you know, hardcore meds, but it was a lot less than what I was on. And... Um, when I got home, I decided that I was on such a slow, and I don't recommend this, um, because I didn't check with my doctor, but I was on such a small amount of the morphine. I really did not want to be on morphine, so I um, I had stopped taking that. So uh, what I really utilized was the tools that they gave me, um, which I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm going to share it with you in a separate video. So um, 
uh, when you're done with this one here. Um, I'm actually going to stop it right now so that I can start the skip program video. Okay? Alrighty. Take care.